Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Cynthia Guazda, the Community Services Librarian here at Hageman Library. I have some new, uh, new adult fiction to share with you that's available this February. So without further ado, I will share that with you. So these are new and featured readers recommendations for February of 2023, available at the library. And the first book I'd like to talk to you about is called The House at the End of the World by Dean Kuntz. In, in retreat from a devastating loss and crushing injustice, Katie lives alone in a fortress-like stone house on Jacob's Ladder Island. Once a rising star in the art world, she finds refuge in her painting. The neighboring island of Ring Rock houses a secret, a government research facility, and now two agents have arrived on Jacob's Ladder in search of someone or something. They refuse to identify. Although an air of menace hangs over these men, an infinitely greater threat has arrived. One so strange, even the island's animals are in a state of high alarm. Katie soon finds herself in an epic and terrifying battle with a mysterious enemy. But Katie is not alone after all. A brave young girl appears out of the violent squall. As Katie and her companions struggle across a dark and airy landscape, against them is an omnipresent terror that could bring about the end of the world. That's The House at the End of the World by Dean Kuntz. The next book is The Truth About Ben and June by Alex Kiester. From the moment Ben and June met in a hospital waiting room on New Year's Eve, their love has, has seemed faded. Looking back at all the teeny, unlikely decisions that brought them together, it was easy to believe their relationship was special. But now, after several years of marriage, June is struggling as a new mom. At times, she wonders about the life she didn't choose. What what might have what might have been if she hadn't given up the lead role in a famous ballet to start a family? Feeling like a bad mom and more alone than ever, she writes to her deceased mother, hoping for a sign of what she should do next. One morning, Ben wakes wakes to the sound of his baby and quickly realizes that June is gone, along with her suitcase. As Ben attempts to piece together June's disappearance, her new friends mention things he knows nothing about. A mysterious petition, June's falling out with another mom, her strange fixation on a Greek myth. The more Ben uncovers about June, the more he realizes how little he actually knows her. And now the only way to bring June home is to understand why she left. Told through alternating perspectives of husband and wife, the truth about Ben and June is a witty and wise page turner about life's many crossroads and a heartfelt reminder that we create our own destiny. The Truth About Ben and June by Alex Keister. The Things We Do to Our Friends by Heather Darwin. Edinburgh, Scotland, a moody city of la labyrinthine all alleyways, oppressive fog, and buried history. The ultimate destination for someone with something to hide. Perfect for Claire, then who arrives utterly alone and yearning to reinvent herself. And what better place to conceal the secrets of her past than at the university in the heart of the fabled cobblestoned old town? When Claire meets Tabitha, a charismatic, beautiful, and intimidatingly rich girl from her art history class, she knows she's destined to become friends with her and her exclusive circle, ravish, ravish Samuel, shrewd Ava, and pragmatic Imogen. Claire is immediately drawn into their libertine world of sophisticated dinner parties and summers in France. The new life she always envisioned for herself has seemingly begun. Then Tabitha reveals a little project she's been working on, one that she needs Claire's help with. Even though it goes against everything Claire has tried to repent for, even though their intimacy begins to darken into codependence, but as Claire starts to realize just what her friends are capable of, it's already too late because they've taken the plunge. They're so close to attaining everything they want and there's no going back. 
reimagining the classic themes of obsession and ambition with an original and sinister edge. The Things We Do to Our Friends is a seductive thriller about the toxic battle between those who have and those who covet, between the desire to truly belong and the danger of being truly known. The Things We Do to Our Friends, and that's by Heather Darwin. The Villa by Rachel Hawkins. As kids, Emily and Chess were inseparable. But by their 30s, their bond has been strained by the demands of their adult lives. So when Chess suggests a girl's trip to Italy, Emily jumps at the chance to reconnect with her best friend. Villa Aestis in Orvieto is a high-end holiday home now. But in 1974, it was known as Villa Rosado and rented for the summer by a notorious rock star, Noel Gordon. In an attempt to reignite his creative spark, Noel invites up-and-coming musician Pierce Sheldon to join him, as well as Pierce's girlfriend, Mari, and her stepsister, Lara. But he also sets in motion a chain, chain of events that leads to Mari writing one of the greatest horror novels of all time, Lara composing a platinum album, and ends in Pierce's brutal murder. As Emily digs into the villa's complicated history, she begins to think there might be more to the story of that fateful summer in 1974. That perhaps Pierce's murder wasn't just a tale of sex, drugs, and rock and roll gone wrong, but that something more sinister might have occurred, and that there might be clues hidden in the now iconic works that Marie and Laura left behind. Yet the closer that Emily gets to the truth, the more tension she feels developing between her and Chess. As secrets from the past come to light, equally dangerous betrayals from the present also emerge, and it begins to look like the villa will claim another victim before the summer ends. Inspired by Fleetwood Mac, the Manson murders, and the infamous summer Percy and Mary Shelley spent with Lord Byron at a Lake Geneva castle, the birthplace of Frankenstein, the villa welcomes you into its deadly legacy a villa by rachel hawkins sleep no more by jane ann krentz seven months ago palace llewellyn talia march and amelia rivers were strangers until their fateful stay at the lucent springs hotel an earthquake and a fire partially destroyed the hotel but the women have no memory of their time there now close friends the three women co-host a podcast called The Lost Night Files, where they investigate cold cases and hope to connect with others who may have had a similar experience to theirs, an experience that has somehow enhanced the psychic abilities already present in each woman. After receiving a tip for their podcast, Palace travels to the small college town of Carnelian, California, to explore an abandoned asylum. Shaken by the dark energy she feels in the building, she's rushing out when she's stopped by a dark figure who turns out to be the woman's mysterious tipster. The women's mysterious tipster. Ambrose Drake is certain he's a witness to a murder, but without a body, everyone thinks he's having delusions caused by extreme sleep deprivation. But Ambrose is positive something terrible happened at the Carnelian Sleep Institute the night he was there. Unable to find proof on his own, he approaches Palace for help, only for her to realize that Ambrose, too, has a lost night that he can't remember, one that may be connected to Palace. Palace and Ambrose con conduct their investigation using the podcast as a cover, and while the townsfolk are eager to share what they know, it turns out there are others who are not so happy about their questions, and someone is willing to kill to keep the truth from coming out. That's Sleep No More by Jane Ann Krentz. Blaze Me a Sun by Christopher Carlson. In February 1986, the Hallen police receive a call from a man who claims to have attacked his first victim. I'm going to do it again, he says, before the line cuts off. By the time police officer Sven Jorgensen reaches the crime scene, the woman is taking her last breath. For Sven, this will prove a decisive moment. On the same night, Sweden plunges into a state of shock after the murder of the prime minister. Could there possibly be a connection? As Sven becomes obsessed with the case, two more fall victim. For years, Sven remains haunted by the murders he cannot solve, fearing the killer will strike again. 
Having failed to catch him, Sven retires from the police, passing his obsession to his son, who has joined the force to be closer to his father. Decades later, the case unexpectedly resurfaces when a novelist returns home to Halland amid a failed marriage and a sputtering career. The, the writer befriends the retired police officer who helps the novelist, our narrator, unspool the many strands of this engrossing tale about a community confronting its shames and legacies. A number one international bestseller, Blaze Me a Son, marks the American debut of the youngest winner of the Best Swedish Crime Novel of the Year Award, the top prize for Swedish crime writers, whose past winners include Stieg Larsson and Henny Mankell. That's Blaze Me a Son by Christopher Carlson. Age of Vice by Depti Kapoor. Kapoor. New Delhi, 3 a.m., a speeding Mercedes jumps the curb, and in the blink of an eye, five people are dead. It's a rich man's car. But when the dust settles, there is no, there is no rich man at all, just a shell-shocked servant who cannot explain the strange series of events that led to this crime. Nor can he foresee the dark drama that it, that is about to unfold. Deftly shifting through time and perspective in contemporary India, Age of Vice is an epic action-packed story propelled by the seductive wealth, startling corruption, and bloodthirsty violence of the Wadea family, loved by some, loathed by others, and feared by all. In the shadow of lavish estates, extravagant parties, predatory business deals, and calculated political influence, three lives become dangerously entwined. AJ is the watchful servant born into poverty who rises through the family's ranks. Sonny is the playboy heir who dreams of outshining his father, whatever the cost. And Nita is a curious journalist caught between morality and desire. Against a sweeping plot fueled by loss, pleasure, greed, yearning, violence, and revenge, will these characters' connections become a path to escape or a trigger of further destruction? Equal parts crime thriller and family saga, transporting readers from the dusty villages of, of Uttar Pradesh to the urban energy of New Delhi. Age of Vice is an intoxicating novel of gangsters and lovers, false friendships, forbidden romance, and the consequences of corruption. Binge-worthy entertainment at its literary best. That's called The Age of Vice by Deepti Kapoor. And this ends our uh, book talk of new uh, new adult fiction available at the library. You can please follow the Hageman Memorial Library online for more recommendations and library goodness. Our handles, um, Facebook, YouTube, and for now, Twitter, um, at Hageman Library, Instagram, at Hageman underscore East Haven. And let us know in the comments what's made your uh, to be read list and what you're currently reading. Thank you very much for joining me this afternoon, and I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I look forward to being back next month with our March uh, recommendations. Thank you. Thank you all. Have a wonderful day.